Praise the Lord, Morning Star. Amen. What a treat and a blessing it is to be in the house of God. Thankful for all of our visiting friends. And I also want to thank God for Pastor Eddie Gaines, who is here. I believe he brought some friends and family and possibly ministers. We pray blessing upon your life. We're keeping his family in prayer. Amen. We're so thankful for the body of Christ. Amen. I always say this when I come up here, but I'm thankful that I, I have been raised in the house of God, giving him glory. And Brother George begins to sing some of the older songs that really touches my spirit. Because when I was younger, I can't say that I appreciated them the way that I do today. But I'm so thankful for allowing us to grow up, those of us who grew up in the church, I'm thankful for allowing us to grow up in the church and for some of you to raise your children, that one day they're gonna look back and say, God, I'm thankful, I remember this song. I remember that one night or that one day where you touched my spirit and that song ministered to me. I'm so thankful. I'm thankful, I'm thankful. Why don't we thank God for Bishop and a like lady and lady on up for the pastoral staff. Amen. I'm going to ask that you would open in your Bibles to Exodus 15 and 22. Exodus 15 and 22. We're going to read unto the 26th verse. We want to thank God for all who are online, who are watching the stream. Pray blessings upon your life. That God may minister to you and bring you to this house. Again, that's Exodus 15 and 22. Verse 26. When you have found your place, could you please say amen? amen? Scripture reads So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Merah, they could not drink of the waters of Merah, for they were bitter, therefore the name of it was called Merah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us to this place. Thank you for your presence and your great name, the name of Jesus, that we magnify and we exalt. Father, I need your help this afternoon. Pray that you would speak through me, that you would anoint me, that you would touch me, that under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, I would deliver what you would have this day. By myself, Lord, I can't deliver a word through you, Jesus. You have made me able, you have called me. And I pray right now that you would have your way, Father. Speak. Let revelation and anointing fall. Minister to your people. Give them encouragement. Strengthen them. Bless them, Lord Jesus. In this very hour, Lord, you know what we need. You have prepared a perfect word. And we pray thank you, Lord, in the precious and the holy name of Jesus. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. You may be seated. I didn't get a chance to finish this message, so I'm praying that the Holy Ghost will finish it for me. Can somebody say amen? amen. And the title's changed, all kinds of stuff's happening, and I'm thankful that God is interrupting my plans. Can somebody say amen? amen. <laughs> the title that I want to speak on, I feel most inspired to, to uh, preach from, is this. Jesus, make the bitter sweet. Jesus, make the bitter sweet. 
I want to say from the onset that the primary purpose of this church is to prepare you to meet Jesus. As Bishop said just a couple minutes ago, we're sorry if we don't sing your favorite songs or if we don't uh, order the service according to your liking or if we don't fit your fancy. But the most important thing that we want to offer and to deliver to you is, is that message of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Above all, we're thankful for this building and we're thankful for every blessing that has been bestowed upon us. But we want to give you Jesus. We want you to be saved whether you meet him in the grave or you meet him in the air, our job is to deliver Jesus unto you. Salvation has got to be the most important thing. That's why we get so excited about the name of Jesus. That's why when we say the name of Jesus, somebody has to lift up their hands, lift up their voice and say, Father, I thank you for the revelation of the name. You revealed God's name to me. I'm thankful for baptism. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. I'm I'm thankful for good living. I'm thankful for righteousness. I'm thankful for holiness. God, I'm thankful that in the house of God, I can get excited about the things of the kingdom, and I'm more excited to be here than any other place. I love basketball, but I love Jesus so much more. I get more excited in this house than I do when the uh, Phoenix Suns start playing. I get more excited in this house than when my son is doing well athletically I get more excited when I see a sinner repent of their sins because I'm all about the kingdom under the name of Jesus there's nothing greater than the church of the living God in these last days we must rise up <laughs> this territory Arizona it is a wilderness it's a dry, hot place. It's a mess. And I bet the devil thought there would no good thing would come out of Arizona. But I'm so thankful that today in the city of Gilbert, a suburb of Phoenix, there are some people here that decided to lift up the name of Jesus to defy what the enemy has put in your way and said, I'm going to make it to the house of God through tests and trials. I'm going to magnify him in the heat or in the good weather. I've made up my mind. That in this crazy wilderness, in the wild, wild west, God found us and brought us here. And he has allowed us to lift up the name of Jesus. Why don't we thank him by clapping our hands? In our opening passage in the book of Exodus, Moses had just led the Israelites in a song of deliverance as the Lord freed them from the bondage in Egypt and as the children of the Lord were still humming the melody and reciting the parts of the song that was recently delivered to them Israel's throats were starting to get parched and I'm sure their lips were dry day one there was nothing to drink day two from the red sea and there still was no water i'm sure some was still banging the tambourine still excited about what god had done for them but then day three shows up and their song of thanksgiving had turned into a mouth full of complaints it's amazing how God can move on our behalf and be so gracious to us and allow us to operate in the miraculous. But all it takes is maybe a little thirst or a little situation to rise up that would change our countenance. When we were singing the songs of Zion, now we find ourselves complaining, murmuring, doubting, walking in a place maybe of fear, doubt, or concern. Exodus 15 and 23 tells us, and when they came to Merah, they could not drink of the waters of Merah, for they were bitter. 
Therefore, the name of it was called Merah. When they finally found water, it was polluted, was not drinkable. So they went from following Moses' musical leadership as he was conducting them and orchestrating, creating and writing the song, and they were in, a, 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 in alignment. They were excited about it. And from that, they turned to accusing him of leading them to a dehydrated death. <laughs> Verse 25 says, Moses, he cries unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he had made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Moses cries to the Lord because he had nobody else to cry to. The Lord shows him a tree, and he also gives him instructions on what to do with that tree. As he throws it into the bitter waters, they experience miracle number two, where the bitter waters were made sweet, drinkable, and it sustained all of the people. Verse 26 says, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. He gives them this lesson that his voice was needed at every stop, at every walk. If they would listen to his instructions, he was going to keep them. But if not, there would be no distinction between them and the Egyptians. You see, it was the bitters, bitter waters of Merah. They were a reminder that on their journey of promise, they would travel through and deal with pestilence, disease, thirst, and famine. But if they were to listen to him and his messenger, the Lord would protect and provide for them, giving them shelter and giving them sustenance in the obedience of his instructions. But thank God, the Lord showed Moses the remedy. I said, but thank God, the Lord showed Moses the remedy. The medication and the procedure would come from the great healer. I said the medication and the procedure would come from the great healer. The Lord has reminded me that... There is a bitterness that we all must deal with. On the heels of the miraculous, you're going to have to deal with the thirst factor, the thirst issue in your life. You could have been born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, walking right with the Lord, and all of a sudden, you come to a place where you're about to die for what's happening in your life. And, and, and what I have seen in my almost 50 years of knowing the Lord is that I have seen that one of the greatest killers of most saints is a bitterness that starts, to, starts in the depths of their heart, and it doesn't let them go. And it gets to the point where all of a sudden, they were in the mountain tops doing the will of the Lord but then they found themselves bitter they found themselves angry to the point where they couldn't praise him they couldn't magnify him they couldn't lift him up anymore and and and, and well they used to be praisers and they used to be worshipers, but all of a sudden they're stuck in their seat and they can't lift up their hands. They can't lift up their voice. And it is because a situation brought bitterness into their life and now they're angry with somebody, maybe even angry with God. 
I know we've all been at that place in our life where there's a bitterness that, that grips a hold of our heart and it won't let go. It may be a relationship issue. It may be a trust in God issue. It may be a health issue. It may be that God has taken something out of your life and you don't understand why your children are where they're at. You don't understand your husband or your wife or you don't understand why things have taken a turn in that direction. But I'm here to encourage somebody in the house of the Lord that if you just trust him if you just hold on if you just magnify him he's going to give you strength he will uproot that bitterness that's inside of your heart he'll give you the strength that you need but keep praising him keep worshiping him keep loving him keep walking in the union team of the brethren hold on because if you do God is going to see you through the turbulent times in your life I know the Lord has prompted in my spirit I don't know why that somebody is dealing with bitterness and it's getting in the way of your praise. It's getting in the way of your worship. It's getting in the way of your joy. It's getting in the way of your peace. It won't allow you to sit by somebody. It won't allow you to talk to another person. It won't allow you to have the joy and peace that God has purposed for you in the house of God. But I'm here to tell you the devil is a liar. And there is no offense. There is no situation greater than that to lift up the name of Jesus. I know somebody may have not treated you the best but my God you always have a reason to magnify him you always have a reason to exalt him and say father I'm feeling bitterness in my heart I don't understand it but I'll still give you the glory I'll still magnify you I'm still going to march around these aisles I'm still going to get up out of my seat and give you what is rightfully yours because I believe that this bitterness can't stay. I can't walk in unforgiveness. I can't walk in hatred. I can't walk in anger. We've been through a lot of things. When you serve Jesus, my God, when you decide to serve God, you're going to go through a lot. When you walk in ministry and you preach to those, you even add more things to your life. I can just think of all the things that our family's been through for the name of Jesus. Not according to our own little battles and stuff, but for the name of Jesus. Seeing the things that my parents went through. If not careful, a pastor's son can become so bitter because he sees the inner working. He sees the sickness in the church. He sees those that come through because this is a hospital. And not everything turns out the way you want it. To. Not every kind word is returned. Not every act of gratitude is received the way that you see it. And as even pastors, kids can look at their parents that love people and love God. And if you're not careful, you can get into a carnal state where you become bitter. You become angry. You can stop being a, a sensitive to God. And you be, can become a cynic if you're not careful. And as I'm preaching to you this, the Lord is reminding me of these things that our family's been through. And that's not to throw a pity party for us. But it is to say that I remember what God has done in our lives and how he has brought us through all kinds of weather, all kinds of situation. And he has allowed us to stand today only by the grace of God. There is no pride in this but a thanksgiving to God that he has kept us. And today we're not, we're not bitter but we're better in Christ. Jesus because we've learned to follow his leading and we've learned to deal with bitterness and we've learned to deal with these issues in life and I'm thankful I'm thankful for the sensitivity that we have in this house God has been so good to us but in our account we realize that if they would just trust in God, if they would just trust in God, everything would be made all right. You see, many times it's the thirst that causes the bitterness. It's when you're in a state that 
it hasn't been resolved by God. They were thirsty. They, they had just left Egypt, passed through the Red Sea, experienced the miraculous power of God. But it was in this place right away, just three days later, <laughs> they find themselves in a place of bitterness. I have this question for you. How many tests have we named as Merah or as bitter? On our pilgrim journey, we run out of that which refreshes for the moment. We have many times. But it is at that instant that we must cry out to him for guidance. And he will answer if we are quiet enough to listen. You see, the Israelites, they were still high from the miracle of the parting of the Red Sea. And their first test was before them. But they became bitter because of their circumstance. We have to ask ourselves, are we bitter from our unresolved situations? Sometimes we're really good about working hard and God has allowed us to be talented in certain areas, gifted in certain areas of knowledge or skill or ability to make a situation change. To work so that we set ourselves up for some form of success. Can somebody say amen? But then there are times, it doesn't matter how talented, how gifted, or even how manipulative you can be. You can find yourself in a place where there's something unresolved. And either you're going to become bitter or you're going to get better. And it is in this place that we have to check ourselves. Again, you could be high off, you know, the heels of, of, of a great church service or a great devotion in your morning or talking to God. And then all of a sudden, a situation rises up that causes a bitterness to, to, to grab a hold of your heart. And we have to be so careful. We can look at the life of Samson and realize this, that he miraculously, he slew a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey but found himself near dehydration for the weariness of the battle. Again, miraculous power. He defeated a thousand of the enemies with one bone. And yet, in defeating the enemy with the spirit of the Lord who gave him the strength, it still took a toll on his body to the point that he was ready to die of dehydration. You are a wonderful people. You've experienced the miraculous. Some of you have touched the hem of his garment and have been healed. Some of you have been made whole. If I could give an account for all the places that God has brought you from, it would be quite a story. It's amazing where God has brought some of us from put some of our marriages back together, pulled us out of addiction, even maybe prison or, 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 or possibly even death. And he's put his spirit in us. He's forgiven us of all our past sins. We've repented at this altar. We've been baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus, and we've been filled with the Holy Ghost, and we've decided to serve him and walk in holiness and righteousness. But yet, although we have experienced these things, there are times... When fresh off the victory's battle, we find ourselves discouraged. We find ourselves bitter. God, why did you let this thing uh, uh, turn out in this manner? And it's so hard for us to deal with a lot of these issues because we felt, well, God, if I just did, you know, steps one through ten, that I would get this result. I think I've learned to perform the kingdom and I I've learned to work hard. And even in that hard working and even in the strategy and organizational, the administrative skills that God may have given me, I have found myself frustrated serving the Lord because I thought that if I worked hard enough and I did this and I did that, that it would turn out the way that I expected. And I've, wearied, I've wearied myself at times, especially when I was younger, when I would operate in that manner, yet I would find myself frustrated before God. I realized that it's not in 
the strength or the ability or the hard work, but it has to be in a trust in God. It has to be in a listening to his voice and being obedient to what he has to say. Experiencing great things in God, yet to find yourself bitter from the lack of water. There's a thirst that we may experience on the journey or in the heat of the battle. It usually follows the miraculous. It usually does. You may ask the Lord, did you bring me this far to leave me? Did you bring me this far to allow me just to stay in this state? But the resolve of this is seen in verse 25 where the Bible says as Moses cried to the Lord. As he cried to the Lord, the Lord showed him a tree. Which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. It wasn't until the tree that it was brought to his attention that the situation changed. This tree would represent the one that would hold our precious Savior in the future. This tree stands for affliction that goes before resurrection. You see, unless you know how to look at your thirst and understand the affliction and understand the pain and the weight that you have to deal with. You're never going to get past that bitterness in your life. Yeah, it may not have gone exactly the way you wanted it to. And even though you charted it out, you have to understand that God, not my will, but thy will be done. I wanted to be on the left, but you drove me to the right. And even though I don't want to be in this place right now, God, let me have joy in this place. Let me endure this situation situation. Let, give me the strength, Lord, to hold on and to move forward. Lord, allow me to look at this light affliction that's just going to last for a moment and give me the instruction and understanding in it. It's not until he found that tree, he threw it in the waters, that there was a change. The bitter was made sweet. The bitter was made sweet. God, we need the things that have become bitter alive to be made sweet. It is only through the cross. It is only through his work on Calvary that can we see that the things that we have to go through, that which is polluted, that which is, is undrinkable, I can't go through, I can't, I can't move forward. Yet we look to Jesus and we understand God because you endured it on the cross. Lord, you're going to give me the strength to endure this. And I have to look at this affliction. I have to look at this problem. I have to look at this body of water that I can't drink. And I have to just wait on you, God. I have to hold on and trust that you're going to give me the strength and you're going to turn it around if you stay stubborn against the Lord and say you know Lord unless you move this way I'm not going to move you're never going to get past the bitterness that's in your life you have to give it to God and say Lord I don't want to be in this place. I don't want to go through this. But, Lord, I'm putting my trust in you. I don't understand what you're doing with my family. I don't understand what you're doing, Lord, with these relationships and, and with these things happening in my life. But I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to trust in you. And, Lord, I'm going to see that you're going to make the bitter sweet, Father. I need your strength. Lord, I need you to turn the situation around. It might be a perspective change. It might just be something that you have to realize that God gives you from revelation. If I were to be very frank with you, I would have thought that my life would have been very much different than it is today. Never thought I would preach, never thought I would pastor, never thought I would be in the place that I am today. But I'll tell you this, that with the weight that comes with this calling, 
I'm thankful that God has, has deemed me worthy to lift up the name of Jesus and to share the Holy Scriptures with the people of God. And I'm here to tell you I'm thankful that even though this was not my plan, I'm glad that he made this available to me and he gave me an opportunity to walk in obedience and to do what he has called me to do. It wasn't because I didn't want to serve him. It's just maybe it was a little more like the Jonah situation where he ran from that calling in his life. And although I didn't run, but I felt there were times when, God, I wish things would be just a little different than they are. But when you accept the will of God in your life, you realize it goes so much better. I'm thankful I'm a preacher today and a pastor today. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he's allowed me to raise my family in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. I'm thankful for godly parents. I'm thankful and I share these things from my heart because God has touched it. And God wants me to share with you that sometimes the bitter things that rise up in our life we must be honest about. But we have to understand that we can't stay in bitterness. You can't stay in hatred. You can't stay in anger. You can't stay in unforgiveness because if you do, you're going to be paralyzed in that state in that territory and in that season <laughs> second corinthians 4 and 17 in closing says for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory our light affliction in light of eternity in light of what god has promised us Even the cross was a light affliction compared to the glory that was to be revealed. The power that would be unleashed on the earth. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It was because of joy of who we'd become, that he endured the cross. Maybe not what you are right now, but there was a joy that he saw you, not bitter, not hung up, not broken, not addicted, not bound, but he saw you in liberty, he saw you in peace. He saw you Walking in the joy and favor of the Lord. And we're so thankful that God didn't lay down his life on the cross. Jesus didn't lay down his life on the cross for our carnal conveniences. But he laid down his life so we can rise up out of sin and out of mediocrity. <laughs> Jesus, make the bitter sweet. Jesus, make the bittersweet in my family, in my heart, in my mind. The way we speak, the way we see each other, Jesus, make the bittersweet. There's a judgment that should not be in our lives. I said there's a judgment that's not of God. That's not a righteous judgment that gets in the way hmm, of us flowing in the Spirit. I don't know what has challenged you today. I don't know what exactly you're going through. But if you just hold on, he said that if we were just to follow his precepts, his concepts, his, his ideas, his laws, his words, his ways, his statutes, then we would be separate, not like those Egyptians who the plagues fell upon. Today, as we prepare for this altar, I ask you would stand with me. I just pray that 
when you come to this altar, whether you pray from your chair or up here, that God would give you discernment, open your eyes to anything that may be paralyzing you to move forward. The solution was the tree. The solution is the cross. What Jesus endured, that's the solution. If you look at it and understand, I've got to go through certain things, through this affliction process, but let me do it with joy. Let me accept your will, Jesus. And instead of bitter, instead of frustration, these things, Father, let grace and mercy be found upon my life. This altar is open. Why don't we spend some time talking to Jesus?